Today, women account for almost half of the workforce. But the typical woman who works full-time still earns 79 cents for every dollar that the typical man does. The gap's even wider for women of color. We cannot subject another generation of women, our daughters, our granddaughters, to this injustice. This is the time to make equal pay a reality. We have to make this a front burner issue. There have been many advances in socioeconomic issues for individuals in the U.S. over the past several years, but one issue that has remained a persistent source of concern is the gender wage gap. The gender pay gap refers to the disparity in earnings between men and women in the workforce. The legality and morality of discrimination based on gender in the workplace has been tackled by legislators, experts, and activists. Despite that, in 2022, women in America earned an average of 82 cents for every dollar that men made. In the context of the United States, the factors that have had the greatest influence on wage rates and wage inequalities are the transatlantic slave trade. The slave trade brought in people who were unwaged laborers um, and commodified people. And that has been one aspect of our history in the United States. And the other is settler colonialism and um, indigenous genocide, where the value of human life as well as human labor was um, degraded to nothing. The intersectionality of race and gender creates an even greater disparity by the dollar for working women. Forbes magazine reports that for every dollar made by white non-Hispanic men, African American women earn 60 cents and Latino women only 55 cents. If you look at the amount of money that a black woman would earn versus a white man, that's going to be a lot less than the amount of money that a white woman earns versus a black man. And so the wage gap is racialized. So you really need to look at both factors. And when you're looking at how to solve the wage gap, you need to look at not just sex discrimination, but also race discrimination and other forms of discrimination that women experience. The way I see it is that if we don't address racism, that becomes the, the wedge to, to disunify us. In 1963, President John F. Kennedy signed the Equal Pay Act into law. This bill requires employers to pay men and women equally for jobs that require roughly the same amount of responsibility and effort and are in similar working conditions. This act was one of the first major legal steps in our country in creating pay equity. However, the act has not been able to fully close the gender gap. Our laws have been very limited. We have the Equal Pay Act and it basically says that employers have to pay employees the same pay for doing the same job, but then there are four really broad exceptions. And one of the exceptions is basically, if they're paying people less for anything other than sex, it's fine. A law is only as good as it is pushed for, fought for, enacted. Um, and I think one of the weaknesses of saying let's close the Gender Pay Act is that this is a collective problem. This is not just an individual problem and our laws function so often individually. Addressing the gender pay gap requires a multifaceted approach. Government policies play a crucial role in closing the gender pay gap. Legislation that promotes pay equity such as equal pay laws promote transparency in the workplace making it more fair and equitable for female workers. We have what's called comparative worth, which is a theory that looks at occupations and says, is this an undervalued occupation because of sex stereotypes? And then adjusting the pay, pay grade in those occupations, looking at things like what kind of education is required, what kind of skills is required, you know, what kind of value is that work giving to society more greatly? There's a law currently pending before Congress called the Paycheck Fairness Act, which would narrow those exceptions that I talked about. And and um, they would do a number of other things, like we have a federal agency called the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission that collects data about the wage gap and tries to pressure employers to be fairer. And so funding the EEOC, funding the programs that would help um, overcome the wage gap are another approach to try to address it. It's very hard for employees 
to go before the court and prove discrimination, even gender-based discrimination, as the basis for reduced wages. The courts really require a high bar, and so I think it does behoove the legislature to continue to pass legislation. Legislation has to be always evolving because society is always evolving, so we have to continue as jobs change, as the way we interview change, as the way we post wages change, and even as the ways we provide compensation. There's just so much that we need Congress to do on a federal level. I mean, we can keep doing it on a state-by-state -state basis, but what that means is that we have a patchwork of laws in the United States. And I don't think as a country that that's actually helpful for us. I think that rights, at least a baseline of rights, should be very equal across the United States. And with a really weak Congress like we currently have, that's becoming more and more prominent. We need Congress to take back their role that was given to them in the Constitution and start to pass laws that benefit the whole country, because it will benefit our whole country. This is an issue that has major economic and emotional impacts on working women in America, and our government must take drastic steps in order to de deliver financial equity to all women and work towards closing the gender pay gap.